Okay, the first element of our fish preparation is obviously we don't want to give the fish a good wash, try and remove any impurities on the outside, but eat the fish like this would be unpalatable. So we need to remove as many of these micro scales here as well. And all these scales, they come in different sizes. Now this is obviously a flounder and these have small scales. But often you'll have larger mm -hmm. fish such as barramundi. They'll have very big scales and they can be quite sharp. Therefore you need to remove all them. Likewise, on the flip side, you will have some fish that don't have any scales at all. For example, mackerel, particularly oily fish such as tuna, don't have scales. So you really always need to check with every fish just to make sure. And you just want to run your hand or your fingers along the fish. And if it's very rough, then it's a good indication that there's scales. Now, with this flatfish, they spend a lot of time basically on the bottom of the ocean, like this. And obviously their eyes look up. This side is kept flat to the surface. So all these scales could be full of dirt, grit, impurities that are just not nice to eat. Plus the fact that when you cook these scales, they go crispy and they're just chewy. So first step, remove scales, okay, before the filleting. If you do it after the filleting, what will happen is the, the fillet will all break up and you'll lose its shape. So it's really important to do this as a first step. So to do this, I just have a blue chopping board, of course, for seafood, in the sink with some cold running water on top. Now the reason I have the cold water on there is so that any scales that fly in the air are caught by the water and taken into the sink. If you try and do this on your bench, you'll end up with lots of scales everywhere and quite likely it will end up in the food. So we keep this to a small area here, such as the sink, with a bit of water to help us. And we take a, a knife usually with a nice flat blade, not serrated. And this is always good to have an old knife in your toolbox because you don't want a really sharp knife in case you tear the skin. What you may do is do an upward motion against the scales. Now the scales will always run with the body of the fish. Now what's really important is that you take this knife and you run against the scales, working from the tail up towards the head. see that all these little scales fly off. They can be quite aggressive with this, making sure your blade, and it's handy to hold it further down, is not at an angle. Keep it nice and straight against the fish. Continue doing this, you can see here all the scales, the colour of the fish will change. So you continue doing this all the way up to the head. Make sure you get right against the sides. Rinsing quite often. When you are doing this, it's really important that once you've scaled it, you give your area a really good clean. Because it's quite easy for mum and dad to go and make breakfast in the morning, find some scales all over the stove top, all over the sink. So really give it a good scrub with hot soapy water. See how I'm making sure I get right to the end, edges. Get it all scales off the fish. Now on the flip side, the scales are a little bit harder to see because the face is white. So they are there. I need to remove these also. So 
a little bit easier on the bottom than it is on the top. That's how a scale fish, okay? So the next video you're going to see with flounder, we're going to fillet this. So don't stress about, worry about these. We're going to remove them later on. We're looking to remove this fillet and this fillet here. And that's the main area we'll need to remove your scales from, okay? Okay, so here we have our whole flatfish. And depending on the species, some will be very big, as in you can go really big with halibut, and you can go small, such as this one, flounder. Now, typically, if they really are plate size, we can serve the fish whole. So I'm gonna show you how to skin this fish, and that as you would for a whole fish service. And we're gonna use the other flounder to show you how to fillet them into individual fillets. So first thing we need to do with this fish is really just tidy it up, remove all the outside fin, because this is not palatable. Some, some flatfish have really tough skin, some have delicate skin, so some lend themselves well to whole plating, some don't. Once we remove that, we'll make a little incision near the tail. Get underneath with our fingers to get the skin. And on a really big flounder, you probably need to use some pliers. And carefully, carefully pull this without tearing flesh. See how I'm moving my hand up slowly just to protect the fish. right to the end, so just the head remains. It's one side, repeat on the other side. Of course, it's better to scale this actually before you do do this, even though you may think it's not necessary, because what happens is the scales just get everywhere. If you try and do this. We still need to tidy this up a little bit because we've got some big things there. So you can see this just needs a little bit of tidying up around the edges. And this one probably is okay to be served table side, but not really plate size, so. And we're fortunate here because the fish has arrived, and it usually happens when you buy from the fish it's already gutted. Uh, you always should always check for that because the guts will make the fish go bad very quickly if they're left inside. How would you take it out if you needed to take it out? The guts? So what you do 
is you'd insert your knife into the basically what is the fish's anus and you'd scoop all the guts out. But this one has a little incision there and there's nothing there. So there's minimal guts, if none left on that one. So that's pretty good. One thing we do need to do, need to do before we do serve the fish or cook it, is just remove the fins. And that's good to go. Now, always keep the, the tail on in terms of plating. It's quite nice to see the head and tail so the customer can see that it's a whole fish. Now this typically could be served steamed, poached in milk, and then it'd be served table side we're just putting the knife here and flaking the fish off the bone. The next video we're going to show you is how to do individual fillets and then we're going to skin them and turn them into goujons. Okay, so what I'm going to demonstrate to you now is how we're going to use this for our dish. Now this can be served just as a cross cut if you like, but what you need to understand with flatfish, so obviously we have the, it's flat, hence the name, the eyes are on one side, but always remember that a flatfish should yield one, two, three, and four fillets, okay? Now, this side will get a bigger fillet, no doubt, and this side will be a smaller fillet. And flatfish are very good for our purpose there, which is goujons, because typically, because the fillet is so thin, they cook very quickly, and that's an ideal um, scenario here, because we're gonna use it for goujons, okay? Now, this fish has arrived, already cut down here, so that's a little bit not great because there's a bit of flesh here we could have used in the goujon and, and really want to utilize the whole fillet. So unfortunately the fishmonger has had a little bit of a, an issue there, not sure why, but we need to usually take the fillet right down behind the head. Okay. So in this instance there's no need to remove these on the, each side. You're going to identify this line that runs down the middle and that's pretty much close to where the spine would be. Now, I've got two knives here, one which is pliable one that is not pliable. So this is nice, sharp, non-pliable. We're going to use this to run down the spine first of all. You can see the spine here. We're going to just put the knife in. Don't press too hard in case you go through the bone. You know, run the knife right down to the tail. Okay. Now here, you can put your fingers in and you'll feel the bone. So I'm going to switch my knife now. I'm going to hold my knife right near the front because I want to gain some element of control. Just be careful you don't cut yourself. I'm just going to run this knife against the bone now. So see how I'm using the bendiness of the knife? To basically bend against the bone to make sure I don't lose any yield. I'm working towards the tail. One, but we need to tidy these up obviously. Then with my knife, nice and bendy, in amongst the bone. Second one, okay? So you'll see here, I don't know if you can see, looks untidy now, but all this area here will get removed, and you'll enable this nice fillet down the middle, okay? Some row there, which we don't need. Next time, we're gonna go around the back, same principle. And switch knives to the pliable one. If you don't have a pliable knife, just take extra care. Use a nice firm knife, but try and get as close to the bone as possible. Like I said, very thin fillets on a flat fish. So when you fillet this, it should almost be see-through.
you can see very little meat left on the fish. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to prepare the fillets as per Goujon. Okay, so we've got two of the fillets here, and they're quite ugly to look at, and you could plate it like this because there's obviously all this here that shouldn't be there. Now what we're going to do is just make it look as it should do on the plate. So we're going to remove this part here because it will overcook if you try and cook that with the rest of the fillet. Now you can see you've got a nice piece of fish here to remove the skin, and you can serve it skin on, the flounder skin so it can be quite chewy, it's quite thick. For, the, for what we're going to do, we're going to cram it, so we want to serve goujons. Now to do this, take your fillet and have it close to the edge of the board. I've got a firm knife now, I'm going to hold the tail, I run the knife nice and flat. Remove the skin. Okay. Now we're going to serve this goujon. So I'm just going to cut this into a couple of nice strips for later on. This is going to get crumbed. And you're going to repeat this process with the bottom fillets, cutting them into nice goujon pieces like this. So one, two, it's okay with that. Some goujons, okay? Okay. Okay, what we have here is our flatfish. Um, this isn't a sole, but it's very close to it. And the main principle here is that you're going to crumb your goujon. So that's our first step that we need to take. We've cut these into goujon strips. They're good to go. So we need to create a, a pane à l'anglaise, so a crumbing station. Flour, with the amount of salt and pepper, some cracked eggs, and panko breadcrumbs. So I've got panko here with some parsley combined. Let's just give some color and flavor to our crumbing. Now, firstly into the flour, you've all done this before, you should know this sort of principle. Flour, egg and breadcrumbs. So we're going to do that with all our fish, okay? So you can do this at home, and remember you're only cooking one portion, but there's no reason why you can't crumb up all your, all your fish and cook them for mum and dad. or your mates, either or. So continue this process all along until your goujons are done. Now remember, you won't have a whole sole. This is purely for you to look at, okay? So completely ignore that in this retrospect. You're just gonna crumb those strips of fish ready for your next dish. Okay, next stage, we've got our fish here, all being crumbed up nicely. We're gonna just leave that ready for later because that's the last thing we're going to do. Next step is I've made my mayonnaise. Now, you all know how to make mayonnaise, so this should be a fairly straightforward process. There's a recipe in the book, but this, this is very similar to the remoulade we've done in the restaurant or in your uh, stock soups and sauces lesson with the inclusion of two eggs. So the recipe is also there in the book for your hard boiled eggs. These are gonna get grated. So 
So once they're grated, I'm going to bind this with some mayonnaise. And then remembering that obviously this sauce, remoulade, needs cornichons, dill and capers. So these have already been finely chopped. Okay, they go in. Just be careful of the seasoning here because obviously pickles, capers, quite salty. We don't need to add loads of salt. Pinch of pepper perhaps. And bind enough mayonnaise just to hold the sauce together. Okay, so you will need all your mayonnaise. Touch more perhaps. That actually could do a touch of salt. So we can add the salt in. That's ready now for us. Put to one side in the fridge, ready for our goujons. Okay, now same principle as before. Medium pan, medium heat. And just get it to the right temperature, not really smoking. And we'll add in olive oil. You can use veg oil, butter. In terms of a nice clean flavor, I'll use olive oil in this instance. You can expect it to have an non-stick pan because oh, obviously it doesn't stick. But this instance, I'm going to show you how to do it with kitchen paper. Goujons, gently layer in. And you should see there's a nice sizzle. You turn your heat down now to a moderate heat, possibly right down and let that cook through. If it gets too hot, take it off the heat, okay? You always shallow fry your goujon, chef? Not always. They're actually quite a nice deep fried. But just to make this usable at home, not everybody has a deep fryer at home. You've just got to be a little bit... And in fact, the original recipe that we had with flatfish in the, in the outline is steamed. So that's why we've moved to a crumbed fish, so that we can do it all in one pan and you're able to do it at home. We're looking for colour, it's a nice colour on each side. Make sure that we don't burn it. It's a delicate fish, so we just want to just gently turn, get it nice and crispy, just cooking them in batches. Also got a little bit more oil in there. Let that heat penetrate and cook the fish. Now you could add butter at the end, but in this instance, I'm going to keep a nice, just olive oil. Now once I've cooked all these goujons in the crumb, work them through in batches. Don't overfill the pan, otherwise they'll steam and they'll get stuck on the edges. I'm going to rest them on some kitchen paper once again, but not the same kitchen paper. We're going to get a new one so that they can absorb all the excess oil. Okay, so it's time to plate. Rolled all our goujons through the pan frying. I'm just draining on some kitchen paper or some trucks for the off. off. I'm going to plate this as you would if you're doing it in the pub. So I've got some kitchen paper underneath. Goujons. So this is perfect little dish that you can have sat in front of the TV, share it with friends. Pile her up. Nice big spoon for the remote island. Finish off with some nice chopped dill. You may not have dill at home, but any herbs that you have kicking around are quite nice. And then we can go one wedge of lemon to garnish. And another beautiful juice.